Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to our channel, and thanks for logging on. Today we're discussing the Omega Speedmaster Moonwatch Dark Side of the Moon Pitch Black. You can see this Basel World 2015 debut and own it on our website. Subscribe to our YouTube channel if you enjoy these videos, and please click on the card in the upper right hand corner of the screen at any time during this video to see our full sales listing for this watch, with additional accessories included in the sale, high resolution images for your desktop, and actually complete pricing details for this Pitch Black. Now, before I talk about the fit, let me talk about the differences between this and the dark side of the moon real quick because it can be easy to confuse the two of them. Now here's the number one difference. The dial is a matte black ceramic. The tachymeter scale is luminescent, like the gray side of the moon. The dark side doesn't have that. Finally, the hands and the indices are blackened with a different color of luminova used to create a more muted effect, and the shock of red at the marquee at 12 o'clock is gone, replaced by a tone that nicely matches the luminova. You'll also note that the sub-register hands have been colored in a similarly muted grayish-green tone to match the Apollo 8-themed pitch black nomenclature of the watch. Back to fit. Okay, my wrist is 16 centimeters in circumference, and you can see that this actually wears well. The watch is 44.25 millimeters in diameter across the case from 9 to 3, not including crown or pushers, but it wears more compact first because ceramic is very light, so it's light on the wrist. It feels like a smaller watch. And second, because across the wrist from lug to lug, it's an even 50 millimeters. That's very wearable when you have a case with short, stubby lugs that's more of a cushion than a round shape and you have a supple strap that'll pull straight down. It doesn't want to fight you and flare out. Now, it is a thick watch, make no mistake. The timepiece is 16.4 millimeters thick, and like all moon watches and moon watch alike, it has a flared tachymeter, and that bezel will cause the tightest sleeves and cuffs to become hung up. You should be okay with a sport jacket, a loose sweater, or a blazer, however. Now, another element that is distinct from the dark side of the moon is the strap, which is of a different material design and a different contrasting stitch but we still have a high-grade twin-trigger deployant combination ceramic and titanium clasp twin triggers so you can't simply friction fit it and pop it open just as easily it has more security you have to release both and then there's a minderless system underneath that tucks excess strap length so you don't need minder loops to mar the lines of the strap okay on the underside you'll see there is a flash of color there you go okay it is part of the dark side family after all with that little splash of red that set the original dark side apart, but make no mistake, this watch has a strong identity of its own, though in terms of the case, very similar. Here you see ceramic effectively as hard as sapphire. For durability purposes, you're not going to scratch it unless you regularly come into contact with diamonds and diamond tools, so it will maintain its long-wearing durability throughout the life of the watch. If you're not the type to chip or shatter a sapphire, you're probably not going to be the one to ever put a mark on a ceramic case. You will note that traditional finish, contrasting finish, is still present incorrect. It's actually been polished and satin finished with diamond tools. The bevel is polished, the flank is satin, just like the steel watches. They've achieved it in ceramic. Now you can see the tachymeter scale, still good for judging the speed of an object. The units are not given in kilometers or miles, so as long as you've got your standing distance, you should be able to test the speed of the object using the calibration of the scale and the seconds hand of the chronograph. Okay, the dial. It's still ceramic, but it's a matte black, not the gloss black that you see on the dark side of the moon. It's a two-tone, effectively, with this sort of soft grayish green dominating the coloration of the sub-seconds hands, the printing, the luminova, and the indices themselves, as well as the hands at center, are blackened, such that all you really see is the stripe of luminescence on them, as well as the lightened tip of chronograph seconds. There is a monotone date disc with a white on black print for easy reference, and it does still have the time zone function with which you can drive the date forward or backwards as you cross the international date line while traveling. Note that the seconds hands, both constant seconds and chronograph, continue to tick while you use that time zone feature. It will not affect the chronometric performance of the watch. Now, of course, the twin register design has been a longtime hallmark of the caliber 9300 chronograph movement you can see the slight separation between the minute hand and the hour hand on the register, the mono counter at 3 o'clock. That's how you get this clean, vintage-inspired twin register design, but you still get a modern tri-register chronograph with seconds, minutes, and hours. Now we turn it over, and you can see the caliber 9300 in its glory. No changes here, just like you'll see on the dark side of the moon. Brass with rhodium plate and featuring that spectacular spiral 
arabesque coat with blackened screws, not blued, not polished. This is Omega's unique trick on its 8500s and 9300s. Full balance bridge with a free sprung index for shock resistance. Silicon hairspring for anti-magnetism. That's the SI14 that you've heard of. And if we continue to turn through, you'll see underneath the skeletonized portion of the bridge there is a column wheel, a traditional function selector that you can actually see in action as you start and stop the chronograph. Now it has a vertical clutch system, so you can leave the chronograph engaged without any hazard to the movement. Plus, thanks to the vertical clutch, which has no inherent play, you start and there's absolutely no jump or stagger to the chronograph seconds hand. Is there more? Oh, you bet there's more. It's a twin mainspring barrel, so you have a nice even release of torque across the full power reserve of the watch. The twin barrel is making it more accurate, and 60 hours of power reserve, meaning it has solidly more than the industry automatic standard of 38 to 42. But yes, there is more. It is a COSC certified Swiss chronometer, and it features the George Daniels coaxial escapement system, the tri-level coaxial, the latest, greatest, toughest, and most precise. I've seen these movements, both the 9th series chronographs and the 8000 series automatics and manual ones run to fractions of a second per day. So you're getting a very substantial timepiece. You're getting something that runs as well as some of the one trick horse chronometry competition movements that go out adjusted by a 90 year old man who once touched the final pocket watch built by Breguet, that sort of crazy thing. You're achieving that level of precision on a mass produced movement and you're getting it in a case that's big, beautiful, distinctive, hale and hearty and likely to wear well. A lot of watch for the money and a welcome addition to the Speedmaster family. You can see and you can buy the pitch black on our website.